YouTube. In today's video, we are going there. The Android versus Apple discussion. The GOAT Marquez just dropped the video and broke the internet. And this is a conversation I love to have. I've had it multiple times over the years on my channel. And I think it's healthy combo. Now, for you who are toxic out there, I, I don't got time for it, okay? At the end of the day, I just like having a healthy discussion because these are two platforms, two strong ecosystems, and to each their own. Now, if we take a look at Marquez's first ranking, you would think that he put Apple over Android, but truthfully, when he added in his personal rating, Marquez has a preference to Android. And there's nothing wrong with that because I have a history with both. As you guys can see, I go back to those pure Android days, as well as, I'm not gonna pull out my old iPhone, it's somewhere around here, but I go back to the iPhone 3GS, and I had the very first Galaxy S device there ever was made. So, for my personal preferences between the two platforms, I appreciate the Google platform, and then the iOS ecosystem, obviously. Now, of course, Samsung comes in and out throughout the year. The reality is as someone who's primarily an Apple user, I dibble and dabble in both ecosystems, but I'm primarily an Apple user. Now relax, Samsung Knights, put your swords away and your S pens back in your Galaxy Notes or whatever, or, or your S23 Ultras now, that that's what they are, right? Listen, one thing about me is I admire and appreciate technology ahead of brand bias, first and foremost. So I can appreciate the Google Pixel Fold. I can do the same with the Fold 5, Flip 5, the S23 Ultra, Pixel Pro. So at the end of the day, I always try to give light and experience to all of technology and what's going on on both sides of the fence because that's not what this video is about. This is Android versus Apple and this is an Apple user giving props to Android but also just, you know, keeping it real in the buck in between the two. Like brutally honest, no sugar coat. So get your Twitter fingers ready. <laughs> so the first area that was spoken on was customization, right? It's obvious when it comes to customization that by far over the years, the Google Android platform has ran this completely. Look at my setup right here on this Google Pixel Fold. Look at this, custom icons, custom placement, nice backgrounds like this right here, absolutely. Absolutely fire and cut. Hold on, let me turn. I'm gonna turn on another droid. It's gonna take a minute though, you know? <laughs> but then there's the iPhone setup, right? It's coming. We got the, you know, always on display now. Face ID is clutch, but we'll talk about that later. But typically it's the same grid that we've had forever now. <laughs> Icons have changed, things have evolved. They're giving us widgets now and so forth. And there's also hacks and workarounds with like empty spaces that you can use in order to create these gaps that you get naturally on the Android platform, but it's still not natural. And that's the thing that you guys are gonna see. It's more so about what's native that makes the experience and the user experience so much more like ideal versus what you have to add or tweak and so forth. So the fact that there's no true native customization when it comes to your home screen, and even technically like your lock panel as well, it just kind of leaves either you're satisfied and you appreciate it and you love the clean, simple, gridded, locked in look of the iOS platform, or you're seeking more with the Android customization. To me personally, from a customization standpoint, it's hands down going to the Android hemisphere because you can do so much more. Like if I uh, open up this S23 Ultra, right? We're gonna let this thing boot up really quick. As you guys can see, I love to push my icons down to the bottom. I love to keep a nice clean space up top. And I like to put like a nice background and then that's like the highlight of my home screen versus it being all of the icons and apps that I use on a daily. Like it's cool to have them there, but like let me choose what I want here and what I may not want here. So I don't know if that'll ever change because this is how you know it's an iPhone, but I mean, there's other ways that you notice it's an iPhone as well. So neither here nor there. It's obvious that customization is the best on Android. Now, another topic that everyone argues about and throws is features, features, features. And to talk about features, you gotta talk about Samsung. Because although, you know, the clean, pure, pixel, 
Android experience is clean and smooth and has more customization than the iPhone by far. Let's be real. The feature sets on the Samsung platform outweighs what you get on just the pure Google because Samsung puts their launcher on top of the Google's software and they always add features ahead of Google a lot of times and then Google typically adopt them in the future. So Samsung is the feature king. I mean, they got so many features in there. You probably won't even use a good two thirds of them in your lifetime of owning that Android device. But I will say this though, I think there's a lot of features that come with the iOS platform and within the ecosystem of how things work together that are just kind of like skipped over because there's not features that are just customizing. If you get what I'm saying, the features on the iPhone are tenfold as well, but they're not just in the area of customization. It's more of the feature set of how things work together. Being able to be on a FaceTime call and switch your FaceTime call on any device that's obviously in the ecosystem, but like with the click of a button, that's a feature that's like convenient. I feel like Apple has the best convenience features on any platform versus the Android device. So honestly, when it comes to features, I'm gonna give a tie. I could never lean one way over the other. Now, Android and Samsung are building out their features to align with what Apple's has in the convenience area versus just being a bunch of features and options, which is the main thing that Android leads in the feature set. So literally, I'm gonna give a tie in that area. I'm not gonna just say, oh, it's just Android because I think a lot of people skip over convenience features that are given in the iOS and Apple hemisphere, literally. So that's gonna change for me. So right now we're two to one. Two in the favor of Android, one in the favor of Apple. Let's continue and carry on. <laughs> now another topic that's always discussed is ease of use. It's obvious. Apple has the most easy to use platform out of the two. Android, it's not that it's not easy. Honestly, if you want an easy Android experience, I say you go with a Google Pixel or something like that because it's just pure clean and it's a lot less to get lost in. But if you want a more complex <laughs> experience, you get into that Google One UI, which is phenomenal by the way, but there's so many different ways you can go within features and the settings inside of this device. Whether it's the fold or this or the flip, anything Samsung, a ton of uh, things, but it gets complicated. So that's why Apple hands down is ease of use. Everything is built in, everything is native, everything is simple. And that's why you give the elderly or like someone who's not tech savvy an iPhone and you make it easy for them. FaceTime, easy. iMessaging, easy. Uh, most of the things that you're gonna do typically to communicate, easy. Hands down, Apple. So right now we're at two to two. Okay, another long debate, updates and support. This has been an area where Apple has just wiped the floor with Android for years upon years upon years. Until recently, Android, especially Samsung, has been offering four years of support. But yet still, Apple has support going back to further, older devices, always. As you guys can see, I have some older uh, iOS devices parked right here. There's, I didn't pull out everything. But at the end of the day, you can survive on an old iPhone for years upon years. Now, eventually, yes, your security updates and software updates will end, and there's a schedule, and Apple updates the schedule every new iOS release. But still, yet and all, by far, Apple reaches back the furthest and supports a lot of the older and more simpler and lower end devices versus Android, which, you know, it gets shaky. And it took years to finally get this out of them and so forth. So hands down, Apple has the better longevity as far as app phone support and security updates. So now we're at a what? Three to two uh, way out, three for Apple, two for Droid. Now, another topic that's always discussed, or at least should be discussed, is apps, right? Listen, the iPhone is always programmed first. Instagram was programmed in favor of the iPhone versus Android. And it's simple. It's because Android is so fragmented. Look at all of these different devices that function in so many different ways, <laughs> right? On Android. How can I make my app work on all of these seamlessly when on iPhone is typically the same generally throughout the years that you just have to make one or two updates to versus 
Ah, yeah. So the fragmentation of Android, I think, has been the drawback in app development for the Android platform by far. And there's also stability. With Apple being so controlling, as some people would like to say, controlling, but it's really they have a user experience that they aim for. And literally, if you don't meet the standard, you can't be a part of the iOS app store or, you know what I mean, the ecosystem, period. Hey, we have an experience or a user experience that we want for our customer and we don't want any apps or other outside, you know, influences to de degrade that. Like, and you can't really get mad at that if you understand where they're coming from. Listen, it's so many Android users that's complaining about battery drain and not realizing that it's that terribly optimized app that's probably in the background running, not geared for the hardware that's inside of said phone. I mean, come on, man. Like so many different combinations of gear among different devices on the Android platform. How could I ever fine tune my one app to work amongst the hundreds or the thousands? It's just not ever going to be as seamless as if, hey, we have the same iOS that runs across all of our devices and that iOS has a cutoff, but you can upgrade up into there and all of these devices can work with it. It's far more or less complex and far more of a better user experience. So I got to give that to Apple. Apps and developments, regardless if you want to admit it or not, they're always developed for on the iOS platform first. And it's because of ease of doing that so for the two right now hey don't shoot the messenger i'm just keeping it a buck like these are the things if you want to look from a level playing field you understand marquez had a, a topic called excitement I, I i mean i get that okay let's rename that to innovation i think that's the better way to put it <laughs> instead of excitement innovation right this this is innovation okay 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 i showed it on the google phone first i know you guys oh, samsung did it first yes samsung innovation right here. This is exciting. This is what gets you hyped about using a smartphone again, possibly if you're into it. This is what could get you hyped about using a traditional phone again, if you're into it, right? Innovation by far happens way ahead on the Android platform and Apple will come once the technology is refined to their standards. So hands down, gotta give that to the Android platform. We're gonna name it innovation. Slash excitement, I guess. <laughs> so that brings Android up to three, while uh, the iOS or Apple platform has four at this point. And then we're gonna get into, before actually, before we go to ecosystem, pricing used to be a debate in the conversations piece. And the reason why I'm bringing it up is because of the involvement of the pricing structure on the Apple platform that hasn't been like spoken about I'm talking about for the positive. Because in the past, it used to be like, oh, Apple's just so much more expensive, they're overpriced, and so forth. But as of today, Androids are the most expensive devices. Samsung devices have the highest price point in premium to be paid for their devices. Actually, the iPhone, regular and Pro series, has not had a price increase for a handful of years thus far. It's rumored to be a price increase this year, but for so many years, it was just keeping it in line. And I just want to give flowers to Apple for that because I think in the past when everyone, you know, threw dirt about pricing, we never brought up when it went the other way. You know what I'm saying? And that's just for level conversation. That's just me keeping in the buck between the two. But at the end of the day, the pricing structure, no matter which way you go, you're going to spend a premium price point, especially for the flagship. But there's also options on both sides for mid-tier and even lower pricing now. So honestly, pricing is no longer a, a factor one way or the other. So we're gonna give a point to both sides in the area of pricing. And this is important because it used to be like you can only go one way if you had a certain budget, but now you can go either way. And I think that's wonderful. So we got uh, a draw there. So that brings Android up to four and the Apple system up to five. So now we're gonna get into the controversial ecosystem, right? For many years, the argument of many Apple users has always been ecosystem. Ecosystem, ecosystem. Because Apple, which was a smart move in my opinion, developed the ecosystem right off the bat. Phone, computers, iPads, AirPods, all speaking to each other. Apple TV now. Uh, you got the um, HomePod speaker system and it's just expanding, but they've always had 
a seamless communication. And they've always been designed to work with one another in that way. Now, people always say, oh, this is the trap. This is the wall garden. This is the setup. But it's also like an improvement to the user experience. Like if you take your biased mindset and, you know, you really just look at what's really being implemented. It's just a user experience across all your devices that is seamless and easy to use. Like I put on my AirPods Max. I'm in the front at the Apple TV. It pops up. I press one button. Now I'm not loud at night and I'm able to have active noise cancellation and watch my movie easy. Boom. Take them off. They're disconnected. Boom. I, I can put them on, walk over here to my uh, Mac studio, sit down. They pop up one click connect like the seamless usability of going from one device to another device and having everything work seamless is the definition of ecosystem. Now I know Joy uses, oh, we got it too. Ours do it too. Now, remember who did it first and who pioneered? Because at the end of the day, both platforms and sides pick and pull from one another, which is great for us. This is what adds to the user experience, which would be the last topic I get into. But ecosystem, Apple had the ecosystem first. Apple had the smoothest ecosystem and they still do. But Google has an ecosystem that's in development and Samsung has an ecosystem that's quite mature. Like, you know, uh, the, whew, whew, sorry, I, I didn't break it. Okay. You know, AirDrop used to be an argument. Oh, we got AirDrop. But I mean, they got that smart share or whatever it is on the Android platform. I don't know the exact name, but I can do the same thing. And it's super easy and super smooth. Um, it's not quite as like fine tuned, but it works. I, I was easily able to share my watch faces from Samsung to Pixel, from Samsung to Samsung and so forth on the Android platform, just like AirDrop. Over the years, Android has developed a lot of the feature sets from the Apple ecosystem and implemented it into their ecosystem. But if I'm being like, you know, I'm being like critical and I'm like, oh, ah, that's kind of, oh, a little bit more steps over there versus this one is just like, boom, type thing. I will say in a slight edge to Apple, I mean, come on, they've been doing it for so many years ahead of Android does have the better overall ecosystem, which brings the weight, I think, to six versus four, something like that. Yeah, six to four in favor of Apple in this conversation. You know, this is just me as a tech user who uses everything, right? Like, look at all these Pixel devices, um, <laughs> all these Samsung devices. I'm not even gonna pull up all the Samsung watches I use and Apple watches and so forth. I always dance in between the two because how are you gonna know how good one system is without experiencing the other system? It's always ultimately gonna come down to user experience, which is the last topic that I wanna speak of, which is 100% subjective and personal to every person that chooses what user experience they choose to experience. Hence you, the user, it all comes down to you. So, you know, I, I see some people with blind bias in this tech space and it's kind of annoying because it's like literally you guys don't even understand how sad and delusional a lot of you guys sound because you are being delusional. You just stick in the one way stubbornly because you don't want to feel like, you know, inferior or bad or like any less than, it's like a real ego attached to the brand loyal that's uh, unnecessary to be honest and then there's the hate the unnecessary hate or like toxicity that I think is just pointless like it's like bro <laughs> relax some of y'all be riding for Samsung like y'all got 10% interest in the company and y'all don't even own a piece of stock you know what I mean some people are you know acting elitist and snobbish on the Apple side towards Android, you know what I mean? Without ever experiencing a joy, you know what I mean? It's just because of population and popularity and you know what I mean? Trendiness and whatnot. And you know I mean, you know, that's like blind theory, blind action, but it is what it is. Like humans are humans. You know, at the end of the day, whatever gives you the best user experience is the best system. But obviously if I were to pick a preference, I'm rolling with Apple. <laughs> but I still love Droid all day, every day. Oh,
It was always me versus me It was never me versus you Misunderstood Get up, had to beat those eyes Got up and I beat those eyes Misunderstood It was always me versus me It was never me versus you And now I'm good Wake up and I do my part Wake up and I do my job Just how I should It was always me versus me It was never me versus you Misunderstood Get up, had to beat those eyes Got up and I beat those eyes Misunderstood It was always me versus me It was never me versus you And now I'm good